Right, I've come up to Castle Drogo. Uh, it's an easy uh, place you can park really to get down to um, Fingal Woods. So uh, the river kind of runs right around it and uh, it's down to Fingal Bridge. So I'm um, just going to make my way down to the, the river now. and. Uh, I got down here from the top, uh, it's a really cool place actually, lovely weir here, um, probably make some good landscape uh, style sort of stuff of it. Um, the actual river though is, is well too dark, um, I've only got the crop camera with me and um, the one zoom lens and it's just far too dark. I'm going to have to try and find a place with good light to, um, to get any decent shots. Otherwise it, the camera is already on its max size so they're going to come out really bad so I'm um, just going to make them up that way where there's a bit of the sun still and uh, see if I come across anything. I'm back up from the valley now, a bit of a hike, hot day, sweaty and all. Um, probably won't get time for the waterfall today, um, so I'm going to go and set up at Bowlerman's Nose. Um, get there a bit earlier and uh, do a time lapse. Um, I'll probably come up tomorrow, go to the waterfall. I have been there before, um, got some old okay pictures before, but um, I'll probably go up and take some more um, slightly further down the river. Uh, I've forgotten my wellies as well, so it'd be handy having them. Um, I got uh, picked up a few birds, and I don't really know what they are, but um, I'll have a look later and update it. Uh, there was a bit of light as the sun kind of moved around; it did shine through, but um, I can't really see see too much down there. Um, you can see the, the lights just starting to uh, close in now. It's about an hour and a half away from sunset, so. Um, yeah, I'll head to Bowlerman's Nose, which is about half an hour away and then set up. Well, I've come to uh, Renfrew Reservoir. I haven't actually uh, got time to have a walk around it, unfortunately. Um, I'm going out for dinner tonight. Uh, this clip is going to go in the video that I took two days ago uh, about Bowlerman's Nose and um, uh, one of the, the kind of forest finger woods I went to up there. I didn't have time to do it in the end, so this one's going to be stitched in the middle. Uh, it does actually look like it might be a nice sunset tonight. The clouds look quite high and and wispy so um 
Um, if I'd done that shoot two days ago today, if that makes sense, it probably would have come out a lot better. Um, but anyway, can't change that. Um, just going to make my way down this path. You've got to kind of park in the, the car park just over the bridge towards um, Hexworthy Way and then uh, as you go over the bridge it's on your right and then if you walk away from the reservoir uh, kind of past the treatment works follow it around you just got to basically walk down to the river and um, follow it along to get to the to the waterfalls really they're not the easiest ones to find but uh, in my opinion they're the best ones on Dartmoor Dartmoor's not known for its waterfalls I think they might be the highest one um, here as well so they're not too bad uh, it's probably had not too much water the last few days it's been very dry so it might be a bit weaker than it normally is so I'll put some pictures up that I took of it a few months ago um, when there's a lot more rain um, they're quite nice pictures so I just want to try and get um, slightly different angles today so I've uh, got my wellies on and I'm uh, going to head down there see if I can get further down the river and take some shots Right, it is quite hard to find this spot, um, as I said, so I'm just going to show you some pictures of some key kind of bits you come across as you're walking. Um, basically, I've come obviously from that direction, so you've got the reservoir there, uh, the river is down here, um, the waterfall's kind of, uh, basically as you, as you can see there, that's the treatment works, there's a gate that runs down kind of beside it, something like I don't know, a quarter of a mile, probably four or five hundred meters uh, from the gate down the river. It's the waterfall. You can really hear it. It's the only way you can kind of locate it. But um, there's two kind of trees that stand out here, quite prominent. I don't know what they are, but they might be hornfall or something. Um, you've got to keep on walking past these a bit, and then eventually you should see a path. Not really a path as such, but you should be able to work out where people have been walking to get down there. So. Um, you're probably almost there if you get to these these two trees. So, all right, just at the waterfall now. It's not exactly a torrent of um, force, but it's uh, it's quite a nice composition. The only thing is this bugs me is this this tree's been in the way for years. It's kind of fallen down and jammed there. So you've got to um, try and either get underneath it to get a nice composition or um, head down the stream really. So it's not too bad. It's about 10 minutes from the car park. I'm just going to. Uh, head down it's, it's probably a bit taller than it looks it's probably uh, getting on about eight meters or something like that so it's not massive but it's um like i say there's not many falls on dartmoor really so um That's it now, it's only going to be a quick one. Um, I've got to shoot off now. Um, that's Benford uh, uh, Waterfall by Benford Reservoir. Um, used to be to stand on the top of it as well. Look, look down, it looked quite cool. Um, I have actually got some quite cool pictures of me kind of sat on top of it. There's a, a kind of rock in between the, the water where you can sit down, it's quite dry. Um, you, used, you used to be able to get quite nice pictures up here as well. Uh, it's kind of like a a pool it kind of sits in just before it heads down um you used to get a lot of kind of white froth in the water here and kind of swirling you used to get some quite quite cool patterns with it really but um yeah that's uh, like i said that's been for reservoir i've got to uh 
head up this steep hill now and it's um, about 20, 26 degrees a day. It's uh, hot as it's been in uh, England this year. So um, we're gonna make, uh, make a move now before I uh, get too late. I'm all, just coming up to Bowerman's nose now. Um, there's no clouds in the sky, so uh, it's not going to be a, a great sunset really, but see what we can do anyway. Um, just thought I'd stop by on the way um, to show you this thing here called, uh, what I've heard about it, called Jay's Grave. Um, it's only just a few miles down the road, uh, say a mile down the road from Bowerman's nose, but it's um, basically the story behind it is it's, uh, um, I think, a builder. Um, I don't know how long ago it was, um, some time ago, was uh, uh, building a house on one of the, the crossroads down the road there and um, found a load of bones. He came, brought them up here and buried them down and apparently uh, there's always flowers on it. Um, I've never actually caught anyone putting any flowers on it, but um, apparently the kind of the, the ghost as such or whatever it is, yeah, the spirit um, keeps on making these fresh uh, flowers appear. Every time you drive past it, there's always fresh flowers on it. But I think the story is that if you were, uh, back in the olden days, if you were buried at a crossroads, um, I think it's because you weren't baptized into a religion. So um, Christianity obviously mainly. So I think what it was is they used to bury you at a crossroads so your soul forever wandered. I think that's a, a story behind it. And um, this uh, person here was obviously never baptized. So um, she's kind of still wondering, putting flowers on her grave but it's interesting I mean there's always flowers on it every time you drive past it I've never caught anyone putting any any on it and I'm up here quite early sometimes so all right just at Hound Tour now um, I just want to point out um, a few little peaks on it there's a tiny probably can't see that because it's gone blown out but just above my thumb or my finger there's a, a, a kind of peak and there's another one just here um, and I think there's a third one somewhere it might be this one the, these time with a story about Bowerman's nose, they're apparently um, three dogs uh, kind of turned to stone. So uh, if you look at it, how, how tall from different angles, you can actually uh, see kind of dog shaped um, stone formations on the top. Um, yeah, so that will come in handy with what I tell you in a minute. I'm almost at Bowman's nose now, I'm just walking up the, the hill to it. Uh, even though there's no clouds, there's lovely colour in the sky. Um, Dartmoor's quite known for its uh, hawthorn trees. We get a, a lot of um, oddly shaped, windswept individual trees everywhere. Um, quite a few on the tours here. You can see around which uh, make some quite nice pictures really. Um, quite a, f a famous one at Howell Lawn which I've uh, got a few pictures of uh, quite a few people that come to Dartmoor and um, get shots of um, I might put one up in this video just so you can see what I'm talking about but um, yeah you never know it's quite hazy the sky so you might get a bit of a bit of colour in it but um, it's going to be the best let's see how it turns out uh, just approaching Bowlerman's nose now has a quite a cool story about this. Um, there's a lot of stories like this on Dartmoor. It's quite a, an old um, place in terms of settlements and 
there's a lot of Druids um, settlements here. They used to worship here and you've got things like Grimps Pound where there's a like a big settlement. There's a lot of old um, kind of stories about the place. This one here, Boland's Nose. Uh, the tale goes that he was a huntsman from the um, the village of, of the lost village of Houndtor, which was, um, you probably can't see it now, but just over that way, I've got a clip of it earlier. There's a tour called Houndtor. It used to be an actual village there. There's a remains of it still. And um, there's a hunter from the area called Bowerman and he was hunting with his three dogs, uh, knocked over a, a witch's cauldron by accident and they, one of the witches turned herself into a hare and he kind of got led astray with his dogs chasing the hare and um, led him into a, a mire which is kind of like a boggy kind of hole on Dartmoor and um, basically turned turned Bowerman to stone and his three dogs to stone and Bowerman stayed here and his three dogs were on top of Hound Tour, but this is what he looks like. It's quite big. Um, he's probably three, probably four times my height. And uh, he's called Bowerman because he looks like he's got a, um, uh, well, Bowerman's nose it's called. I always think it looks like a hat and then a, an eye and a mouth, but um, it's a bit like a baseball cap, but that's Bowerman anyway. and. Um, he got turned to stone and he's been here ever since, but oh, don't trip over. I mean, I stood by him now and he's probably, yeah, he's probably three, four times my height easily. Um, you can actually see a little thing protruding there. I think that's what they oh, call his nose, that bit there, but it just looks like a peak of a cap to me. Maybe a couple of hundred years ago when they found it, uh, they didn't have baseball caps. So. Um, I'm just going to set up, there's a bit of colour in the sky, it's just about to go down, so if I do a time lapse, which I'm not sure I will, I'll probably be doing HDR anyway, because it'd be difficult to use a filter on this because it's so high, it will kind of make the actual rock formation quite dark as well, so I will see you in a minute. Oh, I think that's about as good as we're going to get, I've actually come um, up this kind of a peak here. Um, tour as such sorry um, trying to get more of a landscape shot but it's it's not just not the there's no clouds in the sky really it's um, it's a lovely sunset I mean you can't I'll have to show you on the actual camera but what I've done is I've if I just expose it for the sky and this thing actually uh, you can see it's a deep red I mean it come it's obviously a lot better with the eye but um a, it's a very nice sunset, it's just no clouds to pick it up really, so um, yeah, probably going to head back now. Um, you can see, there you go, that's Houndtor there, the one I uh, showed you a picture of earlier. Um, Haytor is just around the corner there, you can actually see it, um, just behind that tor. You can you can see it, say, down at the road. Um, no, you just got kind of Manhattan down this way, really. So this is a, kind of quite a rugged part of the moorland. It's quite a nice um, place, and it's very easy to get to as well. There's uh, not a lot here. There's a lot to see though for photography. Um, if you go over, say that way towards um, Hayt or more, you get to a place called Emsworthy Common, which is absolutely full. Uh, to the brim of bluebells in the, um, and they're quite late as well you can normally pick them up about a month uh, after all the forests start um, kind of losing their, their bluebells um, it's almost like a plantation it's um, unreal I've got some pictures I took uh, of them there only about a month ago but um, uh, if we went there now there'd probably be none left so I'll put some of the, the pictures up but if you ever visiting Dartmoor in spring and you're this side definitely go to Emsworthy Common it's called it's uh, it's not far from Haytor it's only about a five minute walk so it's um, definitely worth going to it's kind of Dartmoor in a nutshell really got loads of scattered tours it's on here you just about fit under uh, 
Um, you see Haytor now, those two peaks um, followed around to Saddle Tor is probably the one. Um, let it be the one that's probably Saddle Tor. And um, I think that's Sharp Tor up there, although I may be wrong, it might be something else I've forgotten. You know you put on some weight when uh, you stand on this massive boulder. I mean, there's my foot, and uh, it starts rocking. A bit scary when you're <laughs> on the edge of a massive drop. Mm -hmm. 